So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome one of the lionesses, one of the later lionesses, actually, uh, later beginning of the 2000s, um, to this Life with the Lionesses. Um, welcome um, Nicola, who's from, from Leeds originally, played for Milford, did the tours in 2002, 2003, and actually had a bit of a session at Bradford, which I'm really interested in. Um, so welcome to the series, Nicola. Thank you. <laughs> just tell me, I'm just so pleased to have you here because we haven't had many that were sort of in that later era that have actually been interviewed and uh, um, part of this. Tell us a bit about how you got involved in rugby league and and, and playing. Um, I come from a rugby league family. So my dad always played and my brothers always played. And I always followed my dad to training. Like wherever my dad went, I followed him. Like I went all over with him. And then my brothers started playing and when they were younger, I kind of trained with their teams, but there were no girls teams that, you know, so it was, kind of, it, it was something that I felt I was never able to do because it just, yeah, I, there were no girls teams about. Um, and then I would have, I left school and I think you left school then and they were like, boys go on to play in football teams or they've always got something going on. That's how they're kind of, interact but girls just kind of I just lost my way a little bit I didn't do any sports after school and then one time I was walking through Leeds City Centre and I saw a boxing club and I'd always wanted to box end up going in there anyway end up getting involved in women's amateur boxing in early days um, I've been one of the first to box amateur in the in the country when it was first allowed and then it comes to end of the season and I kind of I'd, I'd got a bit of me you know, I was enjoying sport again like I had at school. So I can't remember how I started looking, but I came across a number from Michaela Hurst. Um, and she was a it was Hunslet at the time. Um, and I phoned Michaela and she told us when they trained. And I went down, actually went down. I think another last came with me that were boxing, but I don't think she ever played. Um, so I went down to Hunslet and met Michaela Hurst and Dylan, and that's where my rugby kicked off from. So, um, yeah, and even though I've watched rugby all my life, I can remember my first game running the wrong way. Like, it was <laughs> like, it was completely different being on the pitch playing than it was to watching it. So, even though I've watched it, I still didn't have a clue what was going on. Yeah, oh, so Michaela, yeah. Because Michaela's a bit of a legend in Leeds. Uh, she was one, yeah. you know, of the, because I've interviewed Michaela and I've known her from sort of the beginning. So, she was one of the first players to play in the league in, in 85. Um, right. and she's still playing masters now she still goes down and does a bit of masters I've seen now. some Facebook post yeah. yeah 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 a true legend she's just kept kept setting up Hunslet and then she got into Matt yeah. Milford um, and then she just kept it going really all, yeah, she all, did all keep the rugby it going, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so who did you who was your mum and dad uh, your, and your brother's club then rugby club so my dad was in um, East Leeds Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of a bit of a rival with Milford at times, but um, yeah, it was quite funny because when I toured, I played for Milford, but East Leeds rugby club actually raised my funds for me oh, because fantastic. of my dad's connection. And that's where I'd grown up, you know, that's where yeah, they were my people kind of thing. Mm. So um, yeah, so there was a bit of a connection there. But yeah, so my dad would always East Leeds. I mean, my dad before East Leeds played professional for Dewsbury. Um, and then he had other amateur clubs like after his professional days. But then when my brothers started playing, he took them to East Leeds. So mm. he ended up coaching there, he coached some, some of the kids' teams. I think he, he might have coached, he coached the open age as well in the end, I think. But yeah, uh, big East Leeds family. Oh, I bet I knew him in my refereeing days. You, so I, said, yeah. I bet I met him in my refereeing days. You probably did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah, because I did a lot of it at East Leeds. Well, I live in Leeds for a bit. Um, so I was in Leeds Referee Society. Uh, I was development officer in Leeds, but I also refereed in National Conference. So East Leeds were in National Conference. So. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Small world, isn't it? This rugby well, league world. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you started playing for, for Milford sort of in your um, late teens then, really? So No, so I think I would have been. I think I was 21 when I started playing rugby. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah, say about 21. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get on the England pathway then? Tell us a bit more about how you got into Great Britain then and and uh, started on that pathway. I remember really vague. 
I think Dylan, I'm, I can't remember his surname. I want to call him Raynard. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it, right. Is. Yeah, it is. It is. Bob on. Dylan kind of pushed me along and made me go to the trials and stuff. And to be fair, I didn't even drive. He took me everywhere as well. I think he kind of like, yeah, yeah, he can be good, you know. And it, it, it took me all over the place. So I, I can't remember the exact route, but I, I think I should credit Dylan with it, really, because I think mm. he was one that would say, no, you need to be here and you need to be there. And I'm still a bit ditzy now and... Uh, I probably even more so back then, so I just did what he told me to do and turned up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I can't, I can't truly remember. I think he might have even said you've had an invite to this training squad or something, you know, and mm. then took me along and kicked me out of car there. Because <laughs> he was one of the coaches at some point, wasn't he? He was involved in the squad. What it? Mm, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, like him and Michaela just had involvement in a lot of things, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. They had lots yeah, of fingers yeah. in lots of pies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I owe credit to Dylan for, for me um, my start, I think. Yeah, so can you remember much about the training and going down for Great Britain training? And... But you know what, right? I've got loads of pictures and books out here because I've got, I need to, to prompt the memory. And I think we did, like, some weekends and stuff like that because I can remember making up these songs that was so cringeworthy. Have you heard about these songs? Yeah, I have. Up? I've seen the song sheet. I think it's probably somewhere in here, you know. Um, and I think they were on, like, weekends. But, yeah. And I remember training at uh, Leeds. Not Leeds. Not where they play. They call it Archie Gordon or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. I remember training there a bit. And mm. maybe in Halifax. But I can't remember Yeah, I can't remember for which kind yeah, of tour yeah. and stuff like that it was. But, yeah. Can you yeah, remember, remember much about well the training again. then and what you had to do and fitness wise? Yeah, and... I remember it. Yeah, I remember it being like different than club games because at club game I kind of just got used to just having a free reign really and doing what I want, running all over the pitch, and then all of a sudden this were more positional and I had to I had to understand the game better, you know. Mm. Um, so it, it, it were more like yeah, it were more tactical, and that would have changed for me. So. I remember really having to concentrate on that. And yeah. then we did like weights programs. I'd never done weights before. Um, so that was my introduction to kind of doing a, a weights program. And I, I didn't even know what the movements were. I used to get my brother to take me to the gym and he used to show me. And even some of them used to be like, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so it was, it was a big change, really. And that you, like we'd do like sprinting sessions, but you'd be expected to go do them on your own, but, which I quite enjoyed following the program. Mm. So that one, you know, the, the, like, it'd be more ta tactical and having more of a game plan and set moves and all that. But, yeah, but it was good. I did enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. So have you taken that on? Do you, is, do you train now still the same same way in the gym and things? Um, oh, geez, I've been through everything since then. So I went I went from rugby league to tie boxing. So all my training were about... I did both at the same time at one point, but after my last tour, I kind of took on Thai boxing a bit more um, and ended up like fighting in world championships and in Bangkok and ended up, when I were on my own, I'd just go to Thailand on holiday and I'd stay in a fight camp and I'd just stay in gym and train and fight. So it was all about running and pad work and sparring. Then after Thai boxing, I joined fire service and I got involved with CrossFit. Um, so I spent... A long time crossfitting and again went to regional competitions when covid it after covid i did some bjj but decided i will pick up too many injuries so i stopped that after 18 months and i've gone back to crossfit which uh, is a lot of weightlifting and running about so it is yeah, a bit yeah. like that program what you know and it, mm. yeah that that program probably did like inspire me to lift weights because again women didn't lift weights um, and I always think now when I see women in gym that that's what's missing. They've never been shown how to lift weights or no one's ever said, you don't have to use those pink dumbbells because women can actually lift bigger stuff. You know, I think it's that's that's a lot of what's missing. Mm. Um, but I do enjoy lifting weights. And yeah, that was my first introduction to weightlifting. Um, and it's yeah. still going now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you had to be fit then to get in the squad and go on tour. Yeah, yeah. And I think like everyone really tried on the fitness, everyone worked really hard. I was looking at one of the pictures, actually, and I thought, we all look really small. Like, I thought we looked bigger than that, but now when I look at it, I think we look small. But, yeah, I think my fitness improved. I mean, I was never unfit anyway, but I think the sprints and 
and all that kind of stuff. And my power improved with weights, you know, a bit more um, robust than I had been. Um, so, yeah, yeah, all around fitness improved. And you enjoy that feeling, don't you, when you feel fit? Yeah. I like to feel yeah. fit and strong. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, it push, pushed me in a different kind of way. Yeah, yeah. So how did you manage to juggle everything, you know, playing and training? And, and you had to do some fundraising as well, didn't you? Yeah, well, like I say, Leeds kind of took care of my fundraising. My dad took all that away from me. Like, it, was, it that were hassle-free for me, really. It was just like, mm. look, we're getting sorted. Um, and as for juggling things, now I've got a little in. I can't pretend that I ever used to juggle. I had, <laughs> I, I had loads of time. I worked and I trained. Um, but other fundraising parts took the time. Like, I can remember, we used to have to go stand outside men's games with buckets and all that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, I don't think they do all like that now, checking the buckets at men's games, like, you know, poor relative kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, they the, the want all that, but I don't know if... I might have felt like I was busy then, but I probably won. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the call up. Every minute now. Yeah, yeah. So you got the call up. So you got the call up to get in the squad. What did every, all your fa- family and friends think? To, ready to go out to yeah, Australia? Well, I- Obviously, my dad and that were really tough. My dad and, like, my granddad. My granddad was still here at that time. My granddad would, you know, would have been buzzing. Um, and, like, all my dad's old friends, you know, that I'd seen me grow up and stuff. And it was just different for them, wasn't it? Like, my mum would have been excited, but my dad's the one with a passion for the rugby, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think they were really proud. And, then, like I say, it was kind of starting world were changing, wasn't it, for women? So it were, it were new for them to see girls do something different like this mm. um but yeah I think everyone was super proud you feel it don't you feel like you're holding that then you know you've got to kind of do the best you can do and perform because everyone's thinks you bees and ease kind of thing yeah yeah, uh, yeah absolutely you're playing for your country aren't you so yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, a big yeah. representation yeah and it looks like you've represented them on a few fronts now which is just brilliant isn't mm. it in sport yeah to be able you know as you say, when we were growing up, it just wasn't the case, was it? No, nah, nah, not at all. It's completely different now. I mean, I'm chuffed for all young girls now. Like, if I go down to when I was doing BJJ and I'd go to MMA gym and I think, God, they can do everything. They can wrestle. They can do, you know, they can, then they can get everything and be striking. And they're just, and people want them to do it. They're not saying, oh, there must be something wrong with you. <laughs> you can't be a real woman when you wanted to do that, can you? <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. it's brilliant, isn't it? So, had you um, been to Australia before? Because that was your first tour, wasn't it? Was the tour yeah, that's the only time I've ever. That's the only time I've ever been. Oh no, actually, I've been again since for CrossFit. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was the first time I've been to Australia, and I've got family over there as well. So oh, they right. came to see us. Yeah, yeah, oh, brilliant. What part of there. Australia? That's where I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember where I was. I can remember we did. I don't. I don't know if we went to play a warm up game and they came to that. So we must have been somewhere near where they lived, you know. Mm, mm. Yeah, they, they came there. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you remember much about the tour then? And I remember the Australian uh, tour because I didn't get to play like on in the series until the last game. Um, I can remember kind of like having all this pent up frustration, and then I think the first involvement in play, I had to give a penalty away. I took someone off ball, um, <laughs> give a penalty away, and I'm like, oh, shit, what am I doing? Um, and I think we lost that third test by like a, a narrow margin. I can remember there wasn't much in it. And I can remember then afterwards, everyone was really emotional. Like it was quite, uh, it was quite hard. It was like, yeah. Yeah, well, like, yeah, everyone was really sad about it. Yeah, um, yeah. So change rooms were quite hard after. Um, I remember playing in, like, or being in big stadiums and the changing room was just being like, whoa, what is this like? You know, with their own separate closets and all this sound over it. It was, it was just something from a different world, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It is in Australia. Well, it's the number one sport, isn't it? So yeah. It's, it's just yeah. phenomenal in Australia. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so you went out to Australia, you played in, in the Australian, which was a warm up, really, wasn't it, for um, 2003, for the, yeah. which has now been officially dubbed the second Rugby League World Cup. So the first one was in 2000. Uh, so you were in the right. uh, official second Rugby League World Cup in New Zealand. Second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what was it what was it like touring anyway? So you toured in Australia and New Zealand. What what was it like touring with the team? I enjoyed it, but like I I enjoy that kind of camaraderie anyway. You know, you're with a group mm. of like minded people who are all fun to be with. You've all got the same focus. So I kind of like that was my first experience of that kind of um, environment. But yeah, I loved it and yeah, I still have that today through work, but that's where I first had that kind of group camaraderie and thought, you know, this is it. I can, I could live with these people because they're all like I am kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah I enjoyed it and it all eating together and all training hard together, working hard and then having a good party together. It was good fun. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It is, it's like a community, isn't it? Yeah. And I think yeah. at school, I've never kind of, I never hung with a group of girls, but when I think about it, I didn't have all in common with those groups of girls at school. Where well, this were different. People were like I was, you know, they wanted to play sports and they didn't want to be out painting the nails. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I enjoy it. I found my place, you know, I found I found yeah. people I like to be with. Yeah, yeah. Pretty special, isn't it? It is, it is, really is, yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like, Particularly yeah. in team sport. Mm, yeah, it's strong. Yeah, yeah. So you competed in the second Rugby League World Cup for women. What was it like uh, in New Zealand? Um, yeah, so New Zealand were different to me. So between the two tours, I must have improved a lot because I played in every game in New Zealand. Um, and um, I'm giving this flag, actually. I can't remember what I was giving it for, but I remember two of us got presented with them. Ah, oh, fabulous. Yeah. These were like um, hung up in the in the streets around New Zealand, um, and I was awarded one of them for something. I must have done something good. <laughs> oh, I wonder what um, you did. Was it player of the yeah. match or something, or was it at the end of the tournament? Yeah, well, the end of the series. Yeah, I don't know if it was. I just recognition for something. But I did. I did feel like I'd come on a lot in that, and I felt like Jackie could use me in different positions and stuff like that. Where I felt like I understood what was going on. Up on a lot better but I'd had that training then from Australia to New Zealand I'd stayed with the team and I knew everybody so I suppose I just settled in and, and started making the place there mm. yeah but um, yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed New Zealand um, I can't remember who we were playing when we went out but again I think it was a close match and I think it was down to a, a goal kick right at the end of the game yeah 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 it was close yeah yeah, but yeah, good. It was good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think I remember more about like the the nights out with the matches. Well, we we seem to collect a lot of social pictures, but not many I've on got... field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got a few where we stood like before the game, and it was warming up. I think I've got pictures like that, but yeah, they are more out. Yeah, social. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as this, uh, have you been up in your loft then and got a few bits and bobs down? But, do you know? I don't know. I've got this. Have you seen this one? A manual. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been looking through it before. And it's all upside down, but I think it must be about a while away. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's while we're late. It tells us when we'll travel, travel to Canberra. And... Yeah. Yeah, so that's all the dates, actually. I've got that one. Yeah. It's just this one. The news. Ah, yeah. Have you got that one? Kiwis and Britain's dream. That's from yeah. Rugby League and League Express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. International Test Series. So that's same Brilliant. as that. Rugby League World Cup. Rugby League World. We must be in here for summer. I must have kept it for a reason. Mm. But you've probably got all these, haven't you? I've got, got quite a lot, lot of, of them pictures. now. Have you? <laughs> yeah, but I've been doing this six months now, so. 
I've got some good ones like this that are part. Ah, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, and I know there's more up there, you know, but I couldn't find it. Mm. So it's lovely memories, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Oh, they're great. Yeah, I need to go, like, I've got all sorts up there. Yeah, yeah. One thing that this project's really done is started people going up and then just remembering what was happening, which is really lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Oh, I remember this, actually. This was like a... I remember us going through streets and all singing and dancing. It must have been some kind of parade. Mm. That was New Zealand. That would be far. Yeah. Yeah, there was some kind of welcome went on where we all went through streets and did a song and a dance. Mm. Yeah. So no, what yeah. do you think I... then, um, when you reflect on your achievements, what do you think about it? Well, you know, I didn't start thinking about it until I said to you that we'll do this interview, but I think I think we've, we've paved the way for what is today. You know, if we hadn't started something and worked hard and slogged like we did, then they won't have what they've got today, would they? So in some respects, I think, you know, we started that process. We were the ones to break the mould, so to speak, because we were the ones that were playing rugby when you weren't really encouraged to play rugby or, you know, people kind of, what, you're playing rugby? Isn't that a guy's game? You know, we we went through all that period. So I, I just think we started, like, paving the way for what, what we've got now. And, um, yeah, it needs to continue, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you were, you were, um, you know, you were real pioneers for sport, yeah. but also rugby league. Yeah. And when you look at people playing now, it's like, wow. You know, when you look at sport now, what would you say to the people, you know, young young women that are, have got the life ahead of them around sort of rugby league and sport? Yeah, I, you know, I'd tell them to get involved wherever they can and kind of don't close doors on, the, doors on themselves. Uh, keep going through them, keep opening them and progressing. You know, they've got to carry it now, haven't they? They've got to mm. push women's sport forward and there's a long way to go, you know, Women's sport is promoted more now, but it's not had the promotion. It's not had the, um, it's not bringing the money in yet, is it, that men's sport brings? So that's kind of where it's going to go in the next 20, 30 years. It's going to, they're going to start, start getting paid better and reaping the rewards that way, aren't they? Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd tell them to keep going. Yeah, know, yeah. Keep and when you look at what the opportunity is now, what does it feel like to women in sport? Oh. I'm jealous of them. I'm so jealous in all sports. Everything I look at, everything that I did, like when I was younger, and that, that I'd want to do now with my body and hand, I'm like, I'm just so jealous of what they can do, facilities they have, coaching they get, you know, everything. So, yeah, but jealous, but it's good. I'm, 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 I'm happy for them, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Happy for them. Well, Nicola, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I mean, you've not just excelled at rugby league, you've excelled in so many sports and broken the mould for so many women. Uh, you should be proud. You should be proud that you've paved, yeah. paved the way for women in sport. And thank you so much for being interviewed. No worries, Julie. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs>